Nobody is out here building true freedom and legacy for their family's last name unless they got a team. Because doing it solo means you're just a self-employed. Like if you know anything about the cash flow quadrant, you go from being an employee to self-employed to a business owner to an investor and there's levels to it. And so you need to really look at who is around you that is Everybody's not going to thank you. Exactly. Welcome to the We Got Problems podcast with co-hosts Curtis G. Martin, Rhonda L. Brown, and Khalif Johnson C. The one and only podcast where solutions get discussed to our community's everyday troubles. Each week, you will hear mind-blowing conversations and actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to become more effective. We got problems and we got solutions. Hey, you guys, welcome to the show. This is We Got Problems, the podcast where we talk solutions. My name is Curtis G. Martin. I'm here with my co-host, Rondell Brown. Hey, everybody. My second co-host, Khalif Johnson Sr. Peace out. How y'all doing? And we have a special guest in the house today, Miss Ashley Scott. <laughs> Ashley, why don't you go ahead and tell the people a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Peace, everybody. I am Ashley Scott. I'm a realtor. I'm based here in Atlanta, Georgia, but many people know me for bringing 19 of my friends and family together back in 2020, June of 2020, to acquire what started off as 97 acres of land. We now have 502 acres of land where we're building Freedom, Georgia, a sustainable, smart city for Black futures. So how did you guys come up with the idea of Freedom Georgia? Well, ultimately, um, when 2020 was happening and we had all that unrest and we saw our black men being murdered, we saw Breonna Taylor, Ta Breonna Taylor get murdered, and we wanted to really change the kind of systemic racism and oppression that's happening from a real foundational level. And being a real estate agent, <clears throat> and I'm living here in Stonecrest, Georgia, I was inspired that the cityhood movement could be a response to the oppression and systemic racism that our people have experienced, specifically when it comes to like policing, when you think about the uh, wealth gap and just all the social economic disparities that our black community faces, creating our own city in the same way that our ancestors did is really a solution to these problems. And that's what inspired us, along with the fact that, you know, I call it divine inspiration because a town uh, called Toomsboro went viral and we went out there to check it out. And we ended up falling in love with central Georgia and the property that we purchased was on unincorporated land. And that's how the cityhood movement was born. Oh, wow. I remember that that Tombstone um, city. A lot of people went Tombsboro. out there. And, <laughs> Tombsboro. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do remember it because a few people went out there and they were all talking about it. Uh, had a few structures out there, mm -hmm. court and some other stuff. But yeah. Yeah. And the structures there, there was it was 40 acres of land. It had some old buildings that needed complete retrofits and renovations. And they wanted 1.7 is what they were advertising. But once they seen a bunch of black folks show up, they said it was worth 2.4. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of stuff that goes on out here in these streets. But ultimately, we knew that we could get a better deal buying the unincorporated raw land that we did. And we could build without having to retrofit these old, you know, dirty uh, practices that people have when it came to like coal and just uh, gas and just all the things that older buildings utilize. They're mm. not environmentally friendly or sustainable when it comes to energy. They're not energy efficient. None of the things that really make a building environmentally efficient are in those older buildings. So we'll really have the opportunity to build from the ground up because we purchased this raw, undeveloped land, and we can do all of it sustainably with environmentally friendly materials, with more en energy efficient 
appliances, but even beyond energy efficient appliances, which is what most new builders and subdivisions talk about when they say green and um, environmentally friendly. We're talking about the actual materials. We're talking about having a solar farm. We're talking about our water filtration systems and making sure that we don't have a flint down the road. So really mm. building infrastructure that is not just for us, by us, but just truly environmentally sustainable and uh, self-sufficient and really truly green. So when you first got started, did you, did you um, consider all of this stuff or did, was it a, like an afterthought or? Yeah. So a lot of the things that we were thinking about was around environmental sustainability, even from the gate, because we were really interested in incorporating just like the best practices, like people in Germany, Sweden, all over the world have been practicing like and building eco villages and really getting down to like permaculture practices and how to best create communities that will not continue to rape the earth, right? And so we wanted to make sure that we incorporated that from day one, especially when we saw how pristine the community was. And it's really in a heavily forested area that was um, actually stewarded at uh, one point by the Muscogee Creek Indians. So this land is beautiful and it's right on the Oconee River. So from the beginning, we had desire to make sure that we did as much as we could to protect the environment and be sustainable and environmentally friendly. Okay, so with that being said, right, with such a beautiful land to work in and such good nature around you and all the good environment, like how you really want to start it off, how hard was it to get like really started with getting everyone involved with the whole project? It takes a lot of effort and energy and organizing, of course, and then really getting the vision together is what has taken us the longest because you've got 19 people and the world watching, and then you've got partners and strategic partners and architects and environmentalists and different people. They all have opinions and not to put, mention the fact that you also have to throw in the realistic aspects of we've got to fund it and finance it. We've got to get it permitted and approved by the county. So there's so many different layers of the project that it is taking a long time. And to be honest, it's a lot of moving parts and you really just kind of have to take it one step at a time. Or like I always like to say, like, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. And so we started really focusing first on community and building our brand, our messaging, talking and having events like the one we have coming up, Queens of Sustainability Summit, because these events really create the real life community of who will live in this community. Because really it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? If you just design a community without actually having the stakeholders who are going to live there in mind, you just making something up out your mind that might not actually solve the challenges of the people. And you really, and we really want to create a community that is for us, by us. So really taking the time to find out, you know, who is truly, you know, interested in living in an intentional community in a sustainable smart city like this, finding the people who had the true credentials to be able to build it. All of that has been a big part of what we've been working on. So you, you named a couple of them, but who are some of these strategic partners that it takes to build a smart city? So uh, I'm really excited because we have a lot of black owned amazing businesses that are coming on board. And I just got done mentioning our Queens of Sustainability Summit. A lot of these um, partners of ours are black women who have invented technology. They are just super dope. So one of the young ladies um, and one of the companies that we're partnering with around, again, that water filtration and being able to have 
water and abundance for our community is Aqua Genuity, Dial Avant. And she's one of the um, just kind of tech darlings right now out here for being able to use her technology and her infrastructure portion of her business to be able to provide water in copious amounts to communities in need. And instead of coming after the fact to like a Flint or to a Jacksonville, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, which is what she's doing, we're building this into the system from the beginning because the infrastructure is the very first level of what we have to build. We're also working with some phenomenal people in municipality building like Donetta Wells from Wells Financial. And so people who um, really build cities and do development, they go after bonds and municipal bonds are a huge process that's integral into making sure that you have your uh, broadband that have your plumbing and your stormwater and sewage runoff, your waste management systems. All of those are typically built using municipal bonds. And that is a whole process that a lawyer and a whole team of consultants, that they go through a process. And so having people, because I don't know all this stuff, having people who know this stuff is in, you know, essential and vital to get into the next stage. Um, we also are working with a black owned fiber company that will help to lay the actual rural broadband in our community, A2D2. Um, and so these are just some of the aspects. We also have um, ship mobile enterprises, Jessica Lewis, the shipping container lady. She is designing and she is available to design anyone who wants to buy land on our project. She can build a home out of containers for you. So um, that's one of our partners. So every stage, we really have taken the time to get people, including our, you know, our master planners, our architects, people who will make sure that this vision that we have comes to life. And it really is a lot of um, high level conversations around sustainability and design and innovation and technology from geothermal and um, solar. And there's a black solar company we'll be using. Um, I can't think of the name of this company. It's not on the top of my mind right now, but Spencer has been doing solar all over the country. And so it's really exciting to have such intelligent, brilliant black people really making this project come to fruition. Okay. So what is a strategy for building freedom and legacy that others can replicate? The main thing is to organize and start. I always reference, um, I thought it was Killer Mike, but it really was not. Apparently Martin Luther, uh, Malcolm X said it first. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Strategize, organize, and mobilize, right? I'm like, oh, okay, Killer Mike said it. He did not. That was... Um... <laughs> hey, hey, it works the same. It works the same. <laughs> So um, that really is the strategy, right? To really take the time. I would tell anybody and everybody, the first place to start with is who's in your proximity, your family, your friends, your good coworkers, the people you volunteer with, the folks you go to church with. Organize. You, you have to be a leader. And, and being a leader just means you serve first. You do it first, right? And so you be the person that organizes the Zoom meeting, right? And then you invite everybody to say, hey, how do we build freedom and legacy together? Because it takes a team. Nobody is out here building true freedom and legacy for their family's last name unless they got a team. Because doing it solo means you're just a self-employed. Like if you know anything about the cash flow quadrant, you go from being an employee to self-employed to a business owner to an investor. And there's levels to it. And so you need to really look at who is around you that is Everybody's not going to think exactly like you. I like to say that you want to get with like-minded people, but we actually have to move past this idea that everybody's going to agree or everybody's going to think the same in order for the progress to happen. And when you do really internalize the fact that it's okay that we can agree to disagree, 
and that we can move forward with compassion, with grace, we can have empathy for each other so that we can get to the goal, which is let's get to the bag. And that bag could be land. It could be life insurance policies for the whole family so that when mm-hmm. grandma die and then a, a grandpa die, people have something that actually can turn into a business a, a investment that they can invest. So mm-hmm. we have to really start thinking about strategy. And so the first thing I would tell anybody to replicate is like, get your family, your family and at least your, your, your good friends on the same page. Start having a family meeting once a month if you don't do nothing else. Because if you begin to, one, record the Zoom meeting, start capturing conversations about what your dreams and desires are. You should be having a family meeting if you know your grandmother and your elders are still alive. Bring them onto the Zoom so that you can really understand what their hopes and goals are for your family, for your lineage. Because all these other cultures, they plan. And if we really want to have freedom and legacy, we got to come together and do that same comprehensive planning for our children's 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 future. And we have to work together together. One person get their business off the ground and then we come back around fund the next person's business. One person buys their house and we turn around and make sure the next person buys their house. And we start to create a strategy that allows everyone in our family to be free because Jay-Z said it, it's hard to be the one rich person. You got to make sure that you're leading your entire tribe so that you're not the only person who's eating and winning successfully. That's the way to build freedom and legacy. It starts with just had a Zoom meeting. I promise you, if you say, hey, y'all, let's all get on this meeting once a month. Let's start plotting and planning and strategizing how we're going to make sure every single person in our family is wealthy, how we can look at everybody's finances. Is everybody fiscally responsible and financially literate? Does everybody have a bank account? Who's still che- who's still using cash in a, at a cashier's check? Like, make sure everybody is on the same page because then mm-hmm. you can get to the next level. And that is what I would say is a great strategy. And then you can go from everybody having a house to everybody having a business to having a collective family business to having investments. You can use something called tribe vest. And actually, no, I'm going to shout out to black people. There's a it's called tribal. They got another platform, T-R-I-B-L, where you can actually organize your friends and your family together so that you can invest in cryptocurrency or invest in stocks. Because a lot of us uh, can't move the needle ahead because we all kind of, you know, skimping and scraping in this recession and the way that this economy is. But if each of us can put $20 a week together to make an investment, that's going to go a lot further versus not doing anything, which is what a lot of our people and families are doing. Mm-hmm. So along this journey, what type of obstacles have you ran into? The biggest ones have all, and it, it, I think I say this in every interview, it's capital. And then the second biggest issue is communication. So you go from not having enough money to be able to solve the issues and the different things. Mm-hmm. And then when that breakdown happens, then the communication becomes a problem too, because people get in their feelings or somebody feels like, you know, they were spoken to violently or somebody <laughs> feels as if, you know, they give it more than the rest of the team. And then instead of just talking through how people are feeling and solving the challenges, people shut down sometimes. And then even as leaders, we can get caught up in the business and doing the work that we don't communicate effectively and it can break down the uh, sense of trust in the collective. So it really, I find the biggest challenges are usually going to be revolving around capital and revolve around communication failures. So how can uh, anybody that's listening to this show get involved with Freedom Georgia and any other type of uh, black community that's being developed? Well, there's lots of people doing good work all around us. And if you're interested in being or getting involved with the Freedom Georgia Initiative, you can visit our website. It's www.freedomgeorgia.com. You're going to spell Georgia completely out. Uh, 
Um, and then I always talk about the Black Achievement Fund. I also talk about the Foundation for Intentional Communities. That's a great place to go to find other um, communities that are environmentally friendly, usually first. They don't have a lot of Black intentional communities where I particularly am championing and working to grow the number of Black intentional communities and collectives because most of us have to and who have, because I've been exposed to like cooperative housing and communal living. And when I was there, it was me and one other Black person, right? And mm-hmm. so it is usually the case that we go into these predominantly white intentional communities and they are working through the BIPOC fund that they've established to try to diversify and include more people of color in these types of communities. There's Lakes of Somerville, there's Hereafter Farms, there, and that's just in Georgia. I know there are movements in California. If you're not a part of Village Connect, you need to be. If you out in California on the West Coast, Village Connect does amazing work. They have been paying people to learn about cooperatives. So there is so much that you can, you know, just kind of Google, type in, you know, Black collectives, Black communities, and the kinds like Freedom Georgia and the ones that have started to crop up will pop up. And then you can always follow on Instagram a lot of these hashtags, Black Homesteaders, and um, all of these folks are, I I don't even know if there's a good hashtag that I can tell y'all, but just look for like Black farmers in general. They typically have communities. There's also Freedom Nation, like, um, and then I'm forgetting about um, my folks in Alabama. So there's a few amazing organizations And if you need or want someone or want to get connected to one of them, just reach out to me. I'm Ashley Scott, and um, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Ashley Scott KW, and I can give you all the resources. Okay. So when you got started, when you think back of the mindset that you had when you first started all of this, is it the same or has it changed? Uh, I think it's definitely the same. I think the only thing that has changed is just like, I'm a little more beat down, a little bit more weary from, (laughs) you know, people be talking like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. I can help with this. I can help with that. Then they don't help at all. (laughs) Sound good. (laughs) Sound good. (laughs) But besides that, there's a lot of good people that show up and do do what they say. And it just restores and rejuvenates me every time because I'd be like, I knew this shit was going to work. Like, I knew <laughs> I knew we had people out here that... I love it when a plan comes like, together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I, and, and even with my collective, like, I let people know, like, it has not been no crystal stare. It has been boards torn up when it comes to just navigating 19 personalities trying to make decisions every week. We have these Zoom meetings and it can get intense, right? So just constantly just keeping encouraging and inspiring and motivating myself to not like keep your eyes on the prize, right? So like my mind is like, I ain't gave up yet. And it's a lot of great things constantly coming to us. We got shouted out on Queen Sugar for their season premiere of uh, Queen Sugar season seven. So like, right. thank you. Like it, it just be always those good little like God oh. did, it, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, the moments. <laughs> Yeah, hey, so so, but we we need you guys because y'all putting together the blueprint for this to happen all mm-hmm. over the United mm-hmm. States. Definitely. The so, Ashley, we know you have a, a mentorship program, right? We know mm-hmm. you constantly are working and, and teaching out there. But do you have an accountability partner, a coach, or or somebody you go to? If you do, what what which one do you have, and why? Okay. So two, uh, my accountability coach is Hazik Ali from the Millionaire uh, Minded Community. And every day I get coaching. It's at, between affirmations and literally daily 
teachings and lessons and that pour into me. But I don't just have one mentor. I have multiple coaches and mentor. I want to increase my speaking career. So I'm now being mentored and coached by Ashley Kirkwood, Speak Your Way to Cash. So like you're constantly got to get people. And then we've got a whole board of directors that when there's something that I need or board of advisors, I can go to a slew of people who are more experienced than me, who have more education than me in some cases. And it's important to really have a, a variety of people that you can go to. So like I constantly invest in my coaching, my mentors, mentoring programs. So not only am I mentoring and coaching people, I'm getting coached and mentored regularly. Exactly. And so with all the things going on with Freedom Georgia, are you do you watch what other groups are doing so you can either learn from their mistakes or learn from what's working with them? And and how what does that look like? So it's not as much as I'd like it to be. But as often as possible, I try to connect with other communities. Um, there's, like I said, support calls um, that I use and that we get on the BIPOC Fund Council. It's called the BIPOC Council. Um, and the BIPOC Council is strictly a lot of these cropping up communities and the ones that are being organized, ones that are actually already on their land and building. And we get on these Zoom calls. I mean, everything goes down on Zoom these days, I guess. Jeez. But <laughs> <laughs> we literally meet once every, uh, it's like the fourth Sunday of every month. Mm -hmm. And we have these support calls where we get on there and we encourage each other. We have a lawyer that if we need to ask questions, we can and get that support so that we're doing things right and legally. Um, so, yeah, we try to I, now uh, Mama Keys, 19 Keys mom and I, we met at the Ready Expo and she did. She personally asked me, she said, sis, I need for you all to get together and start really organizing with all these different communities. So I, there are some people who are definitely not on the BIPOC support call. And um, there are people like Boyce Watkins, he has his all black national convention. So like there are places and people who are doing this work. We just have to be more intentional in putting our hands to the plow as people who are watching this show right now there is, I didn't named a slew of organizations. Like if you took notes, there's a way that you can get involved. And so um, one of the things that I would, am committed to doing more of in 2023 is bringing more of like the Hereafter Farms and the Lakes of Somerville and the different org, uh, communities that not only are, I, I know I've inspired many of these communities to just be honest. So to create a, a coalition of sorts is my goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're stronger together. Right. So with all of this going on, how do you balance your work and family life? I, I know. No I, <laughs> Ain't no balance. Ain't no balance. <laughs> no balance. <laughs> Learn okay. how to balance the unbalance. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so let's get into rapid fire. You know, this is the part where we go about 20 seconds for answer and just okay. to say what's on your heart. What's your why? What makes you do what you do? My kids, my babies, my black man, my king, my family. Family is everything. That's why I do what I do. Same. Dope. Were there times where you thought it wouldn't work? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> What's the most important thing you've learned in your life? Don't stop. Tenacity. Tenacity. I love that word. That that one sticks. If you could turn back the hands of time and talk to your 18-year-old self, what would you tell yourself and why? Don't take everything so personally. It slows you down. If you could sit down and talk to somebody, have a conversation with somebody dead or alive, who would it be and why? Uh-oh. <laughs> that one gets everybody. Yes, man. I'm like, ooh, boy. <laughs> Toussaint Lovacher. Why? Because I want to know how he won. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to know the spiritual technology they was using. I want to know the things. <laughs> I want to know all the things. Hey, look, so um, outside of Freedom, Georgia, people always tell us to invest, um, try to put our money somewhere to where it can create um, passive income. What's some things you suggest we invest in or what's some things you invested in? Okay, first things first is always life insurance, whole life policy on your youngest person and your oldest person. So if I believe in million dollar babies. As soon as you pop that baby out, put a life insurance policy on them. It's the cheapest it's going to ever be. And they can use that and leverage it several times over as they age. I use my mom's, my, I use my Gerber life insurance policy to pay for a portion of my education. So that's something that stood out and stuck with me because of my mom putting the Gerber insurance policy on me at two, right? Mm -hmm. um, another thing is I bonds. A lot of people haven't heard of them before, but it's a great way to invest. That's more passive. It's kind of, you know, put 5,000 in, let it sit and do, do its work similar to a CD, but it has a higher rate of return. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely still believe in crypto and blue chip stocks. And when they drop like this, that's a discount. Get it, get it, get it. I think that it, Bitcoin ain't going nowhere. Buy it while it's low. I think that Tesla, Coca-Cola, uh, Apple ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Buy it while it's low. Uh, and then, you know, not only should you have your primary house, but you should have, and if you can, when you buy your first house as an FHA, get a duplex, get something that can be an income property. Don't just buy a house and live in it and pay a mortgage, but buy multiple houses and let the other people pay the mortgage and build yourself an asset portfolio. And that's something you can do very quickly, um, especially if you have good credit. So the best mm -hmm. thing you can invest in is good credit. <laughs> hey, that part. Okay. So sis, like I know it's a ton of books in your library. But if you had to go in there and pull out one and said, this is the one I want the audience to read, which one would it be and why? Hmm. Y'all be hitting me with the hard ones with that. <laughs> now, now, remember, this is for everybody. This is for the young. This is for the old. This is for the men. This is for the women. If Everybody, if you had to pan one book over to the audience to say, this is the one that I represent and I want y'all to read, which one would it be and why? Honestly, uh, I don't even know if uh, this is it. I was about to say, this one right here. This or a version of this because it's the same thing, but... I got two books that are similar. So it would be one or the other of this book. But The Secret Science or The Hermetic Laws, The Emerald Tablets, uh, The Kabbalion, K Kabbalion, something that like these books that talk about the actual laws of the universe. Yeah, for sure. So this is The Secret Science by John Baines. So that would be one that I think kids and adults, I don't care where you are, man, woman, you should know the secret science for physical and spiritual transformation. There we go. I'm on that. Don't worry about it. I'm on that. <laughs> I know I had to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, so a, it's another book. I would, it's another one that's a little smaller because, you know, some people don't like to read, but that's a good one. Like, it, it'll do you good. <laughs> So what is your best tip for, for making your community a better place? Follow the four agreements. Um, if we just all started with that, the whole world will be a better place. It's the golden rule even too. Like, honestly, I just really wish, and, and it's not even, what do they call it? I think they call it the platinum rule because it's not even to treat others how you want to be treated because some people don't even like they self. But to treat people how they want to be treated, like when somebody tells you how they want you to treat them, do that. Like treat people well, like walk in righteousness and really, truly like do your best. Be impeccable with your word. 
you know, um, don't take anything personally. That's what I said earlier. And don't make assumptions because you, when you lead with curiosity, anything is possible. Hey, I had to, I had to like calm down on that one because I was thinking like some people we want me to slap the shit out of. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I had to think about that one. Okay, we get the people gonna... what they want. Get the people what they want. <laughs> so, so look. Um, so, um, when 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 you um have accomplishments, how do you celebrate your wins? I typically uh, go out and party. Like I, I ain't nothing better than a VIP with the homies. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, outside turning up, pop a bottle. Where them sparklers at? Run them sparklers over here. Run them sparklers. You know yeah, no, I, I, I like that. That's something we do. Like we planning a um, helicopter ride when Rhonda come to LA. So we okay. we gonna take the helicopter over to Catalina Island and chill. And That's what anyway, you do. I yeah. put that in my story today. Somebody asked me, um, take a picture of us doing work, and I had to put us up there in the helicopter. I was like, we outside, we working. Okay. <laughs> Now, this is the important part of the um, interview, Ash. I really want you to let the people know where they can find you, all the websites, every place where they can find all of this good information, and how can they tap in with you? Well, please tap in with me. Go to my Instagram. IG is where I be. So, Ashley Scott KW is my username on there. If you hit me up in the DMs, I will hit you back with my calendar link or link to the course or wherever you need to be. My direct link to all of my stuff is in my bio, in the link in the bio. Um, you can also email me. I love to get an email, ashleyscott at kw.com. And you can also um, visit freedomgeorgia.com. And I don't usually tell people this, but if you call the number on the Freedom Georgia website, it'll come to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so uh -oh. if you really, 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 really want to get me quick, the bat line, hit the bat line. Hit the bat gotcha. line. <laughs> there we go. And then um, you can also follow Freedom Georgia. It's Freedom GA 2020 on Instagram, on TikTok, and on Twitter, and on Facebook. And uh, I have a website called AshleyScottInspires.com. If you want VIP coaching, if you're interested in um, real estate investing coaching, or if you would like to book me to speak at your event or on one of your podcasts, you can connect with me there. All right, cool. Hey, so uh, I'm going to do this a little different today. Uh, Khalif, what you want to lead the people with? Any last words? Oh, man, this is heavy for me. Like, y'all know, since you are, like, such a motivation for the community, I love what you do for our community. You are, like, a beacon of light. Like, not everybody is out there with boots to the ground, like, out there doing it. You know, you're out there on un uncharted land blazing the trail for our youth. And if any of our young boys or if any of our young girls see this, this is a queen that I look up to, I follow, and I, I try and mimic my myself and my family behind i just love what you do for us and i thank you for what you do sis thank you yeah. Ooh, good stuff good stuff good stuff all right miss brown what do you have you want to lead the people with <laughs> um look get your family together and build yeah yeah don't listen oh, to what the that's... folks gotta say they tell us not yeah. to work with each other and no get together and build Hey, they tell us doing business with family is not good, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's something else. Hey, look, I'm going to say, um, yeah, start saving money to invest, right? Like, I think Ashley men mentioned it. If you could just save $20 a week, $20 a month, just imagine getting twenty, a 1,000 people saving $20 a month. That's $20,000, right? We don't look at it like that. We can look at the small scale and then look at it as a, as a bigger scale, and we can have a bunch of money to where we can do something with right uh ashley what do you want to lead the people with i have an event coming up called the queens of sustainability summit so if you were blessed by this conversation in me i got 15 other queens that are doper than even i so <laughs> i want y'all to go to queens summit 
www.eventbrite.com. It's a virtual event. So no matter where you are in the world, you can be with us on Small Business Saturday hearing about, I'm talking about government contracting, how to be green in a not so green world. We're talking about um, how to uh, level up in your business. We got uh, Sister Abril talking about how to have a sustainable lifestyle using herbs and urban herbal medicine. We've got Miss Erica talking about how to pandemic proof your business. Like we've got a powerhouse. We even got a sister that's going to talk about how every business can get a film tax credit for their business if you understand how to do it. So there's so many ways that you can really take some nuggets and up level from these queens of sustainability. So get in the room with people who are smarter than you, who are going to challenge you to level up. And that is a room on Small Business Saturday, November 26th that I hope that you all and all of the people who are under the sound of my voice get in the room. Queen Summit 2022.eventbrite.com. Hey, that's good. I often hear that if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. Hey, you guys, we got problems and we also have solutions and we out. Peace. From the team at CRC Empire, we want to thank you for listening. To stay connected with us, like, share, and subscribe to the We Got Problems podcast. You can find us on social media platforms at Curtis Martin 247, at Rhonda Wright's Official, and at the underscore trash underscore vegan underscore. We got problems and we got solutions.